Now everybody's awake, that's good. Yeah, so welcome. I see we already have a lot of guests here in addition to the jammers that were here. So we have a full house not only in here but also out there. That's why we got a fancy uh, sound techy kit so everybody can hear me out there as well. So first of all, the usual introduction, what is the Global Game Jam? Because um, maybe the guests here don't know. I think by now most of the jammers should know. <laughs> Even the ones that are new, because now it means all of you are veterans, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, yes. So just a quick recap, many of you will know this slide already, what is the Global Game Jam? It is a global event uh, where a lot of locations worldwide do games in 48 hours to one theme. And this year we have over 800 locations in 110 countries. I updated it, so... <laughs> New record, so... <laughs> yeah, so... Um, this is the Global Game Jam. Oh no, first the theme, yeah. So, um, for the newcomers, so for the guests, we of course want to show what the theme of this jam is. Or was. And for the jammers, we want to remind them so they know uh, how far they were away from it. Yes, yes, folks. Yes. 20 minutes? <laughs> Transmission was the scene. So who did a game for the scene? <laughs> so this was going in there. During the last 48 hours, a lot of code was written, a lot of art was drawn. A lot of game designers banged their head to heads together to make mechanics for our games and sound engineers brought out a lot of weird apparatuses to create the sounds for our games. There was a lot of frustration, a lot of problems, broken tools, missing communication... <laughs> and even little things like the fact that the Martin uh, ran out was very frustrating to a lot of people. But you made it, or we made it. Um, and there was also a lot, of, a lot of creativity, a lot of ideas that were flowing around the whole venue that basically manifested into all of the games that we're going to see today as well. So that's pretty great. There was also a lot of new people. I hope everybody has met at least one new person during this jam that he hasn't known two days ago. And maybe he even has worked with them and will work with them in the future. So that's great as well. So we really... <laughs> We really enjoyed spending this weekend together with you, and the whole team wholeheartedly hopes that you enjoyed it as well. This was the 10th Global Game Jam, so it was a great year, a great um, anniversary for the Global Game Jam, and also for us to be part of this. So we had cake for the people that are new here. It's gone now. Sorry. <laughs> so thanks out everybody for participating and for making this event the event that it is, because without you it would just be us with a lot of food and drinks. Sounds <laughs> truly awful. <laughs> well, we wouldn't have run out of Marty if it would be just us. Yeah, so of course we thank our sponsors, without whom the event would, well, it would be possible, but it wouldn't be as great. Um, at first, of course, the SAE Institute, um, in which location we are, that have graciously uh, decided to work with us to make this jam happen, that have also sponsored all the drinks uh, during the jam. 
So thanks. We'd also like to thank the Games Academy and the School for Games for sponsoring food. And uh, Games Week Berlin for their support. Um, we are free for sending us their prototype gloves that in the end weren't used but were around. <laughs> and in Qubits that sponsored uh, donuts that are out there. But now, of course, this presentation is not about us, not about them, well, not primarily about them, uh, but it's about you. So now it's the part where you come in. It is. So the way this will work um, is we told everybody roughly when, when it's his turn. Um, I will let everybody know the team that's, that's next and the team that's after that. And I ask the team that's the, so the next two teams basically to come to the front because we want to do this as quickly as possible. So, um, well, it's a lot of games, <laughs> and we want to get to the, to the after jam part where all the games can be played as well. So we're going to do a showcase where all the games will be built up, so you can actually play the different games as well afterwards. So the first team is going to be uh, the Lights, <laughs> and after that uh, it is going to be Rumor. So Walls of Ice is here, and Rumor, please come to the front. And we do the hardware magic. <laughs> 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 to transmit signal from a source node to a target and we know the UIDs of the source and target so the source is up there Luca just now is going to try to connect and he must not go through specific walls so I have a map of which walls are permeable for which connections and we are having problem pulling <laughs> Just the left one. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now you, you can't go through the cybersec wall, so we have to go up. Okay. Can I go uh block? Yeah, you can go through host block with that. <laughs> now we have a connection. And the Japanese Ice wall cannot be permitted or gone through with the triangle, so we have to figure a different way. Yes. Good. You are stepping on my cable. <laughs> and we, we did it together. I did the programming, we did the free guard, and we also had Alaya who was in uh, Helsinki, who did the music, so we really took that. Global to the global game camp. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, hello and uh, welcome to our final presentation. Uh, we are team. <laughs> Let's just get some okay. So, um, we are Rufus family, and uh, before we start, I actually uh, kind of have to explain something, otherwise, it doesn't really make much of sense. Uh, so, as you were reminded, the, the theme was uh, transmission. And at least in German law, there's the term transmission in, um, in law. Uh, it is when um, you appoint your heir, and when you die, but the heir also dies during the process of inheriting what you would give them, this is called transmission, because it, uh, the next person in line basically gets what you both would have given them. So that's called a transmission, that's what we made our game about. So you ruthlessly kill your family <laughs> to inherit the uh, eternal McAllister fortune. So the whole thing plays in Scotland, and I think we can start right now. So we made uh, a little scene here. This is you for the player. It's uh, Nolan O'Hara, and uh, he wants to get rich. We don't know exactly why, but maybe you will discover, maybe not. Um, and we're at the funeral of the old matriarch, uh, Ruth uh, McAllister. So this is where you commit your crime as well, like your first crime. You talk to people, you find out uh, basically clues of who would be the heir, because you have to eliminate the heir of Ruth, right? So you can get next in line. So basically, you walk around, you talk to people, find clues. For example, uh, this here is uh, another character. Uh, is Carter, you know, he likes his bagpipes, obviously, because it's Scotland, right? So, and uh, you walk around and then you can decide uh, to kill them or to leave them alone. And if you uh, actually go for the kill, uh, if you, well, well, I don't know, if you, no, let's, let's actually kill the right one, sorry. You're actually right, it's cool enough. So, we will go for the kill just for the, the right guy in this situation. So we walk out of the room, we turn off the light. <laughs> there should be a scream. see now the character we murdered <laughs> is, uh, is in the casket because we are at his funeral. And now we have to find out uh, who's the heir of this guy because we murdered him as well. the team, that's Amon, who did the 3D art, Rezan, who did the programming, Dennis, who did the programming, Susanna, who did the 2D art, and uh, I did the game design story. So, thank you. Uh, yeah, so the next team is Local the Art Defender, and then after that, it's out of the picture. <laughs> So out of the picture gets ready. You stay here for a moment. Local VR defender, where are you? Yeah, then come, come, come. It's your turn. Come. Uh, how much legal research did you do before you actually started the game? Uh, I think uh, Susanna did like two minutes. I think that's yeah. That's, yeah. So she basically basically is a lawyer. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was a Wikipedia article that said we are transmission in law and we were good to go. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. That's that's how you learn law, I guess. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi. 
So we have a video to show because our setup is VR and uh, we're going to set it up after the presentations but for now we're just going to show you some uh, videos of what we did. And uh, we're also going to show a little bit of our process because during the game jam our game changed pretty much completely. So now it's called Chris Arena VR, earlier today local defender VR, now with this. So this is our team, these guys over here. Um, and basically we start off with a um, idea of having a local multiplayer game where you have one player in VR and a bunch of players outside looking at the screen and getting information that the player in VR wouldn't get and then interacting with controllers and having some sort of competition going on outside. And after quite a bit of brainstorming, discussing, figuring out how this could work without being unfair, um, we came to the uh, conclusion that we couldn't really make this work. So, <laughs> what ended up happening is that we pivoted halfway through the jam and we ended up making a more traditional local multiplayer game that is more akin to a uh, bullet hell shooter where you have one player in VR, see them in the podest in the middle, and they basically come with shields and other players are around in the arena and they have turrets and shoot at the player in VR. And the player in VR has to deflect the bullets at um, these uh, circles which are targets to um, kill the players uh, on the outside. And it turned out to be kind of fun in the end. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to set it up in a bit if you want to try it out. Alright, that's actually it. Thanks. So the next game is out of the picture. Uh, Toby, you will stay here. Uh, Toby you, uh, will also do his other game because he did the uh, final countdown diversifier. So he actually made two games, and the last of which took uh, an hour or two. Yes, one hour. Yeah, one hour. So it's going to be two games. Fifty minutes, minutes even. Okay, great. Yeah, and so what did you learn while failing at the joke game, Jack? <laughs> Thanks. It is really hard to make a competitive game outside to make it fair for the player in VR without having it just be really, really frustrating. After like a day of discussion, we've come to that conclusion. So something uh, cooperative is probably a wiser decision if you want to finish up the game. Wise words, Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> This is technically difficult, this again. No, it's not. It's out of the picture. Oh, it's wrong. It might be a pun. Let me quickly check if OBS is still running because I put OBS now. So, 
Okay. This is not much better. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so I am currently um, I'm currently running on my screen. You can't see that. Right. You can see me, which is that blue thing over there. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So or did something happen there? Right. There's a button here that's not doing anything. So I see B over here. Yeah, so I guess I Santo, is the button doing anything? Yes, yes. Oh, audience. Yeah. 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 Oh, what, what is it doing? Oh, okay, oh, okay cool. So, um, oh, <laughs> you have to help me. What should I do? Jump. 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 Oh, I'm not. Okay. Oh, yeah, you got to see it. What is happening? You are inside the portal. Go one more step and then press a button that you know. <laughs> okay, cool. No, go right, go right. Oh, I'm still on your screen. Right, go right. Right, 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 right. So, I'm this little thing here. It's basically yellow part is a pogo stick. 
There's a ball there that I can't see because this is not made for multiple resolutions. <laughs> um, so uh, this is, can, can you hold the microphone please? So this is basically, this is a metaphor for uh, the whole global game jam development process. <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm in the part that is a bit hard, but I, I persevered. And now comes the upload process. <laughs> I have five minutes for this, right? <laughs> okay, uh, oh. I've, I've done this before. How hard can it be, right? So, um, yeah, wait a moment. Okay, okay. Um, Session time now. <laughs> Unnecessarily hard and cruel. Does it reflect your actual experience? This is this is easier than uploading a game of the Glow Game. Game. <laughs> 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 it's additionally harder because I cannot see a part of the screen. <laughs> I'm rotating in the wrong direction when I do this. Uh, slowly oh, yeah. getting more. Yeah. Oh, 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 This was more about the experience than the result. <laughs> so fantastic sniffles, please come up and prepare your hardware. And after that, it's going to be the blame game by We Blame You. <laughs> and I have a question for you, Toby. Yes. Good seeing you, Houston. So how often did you uh, listen to the final countdown while doing it? Um, I listened to it half, like, like one half time, but it was not actually listening to the actual sound, but I was kind of singing it myself. Much to the annoyance of everybody else in the room. Could you please do that now? No. <laughs> do you want him to do it? Yeah! Um, the main problem is that the final countdown is already over. So. Um. Yeah, and so do you not need sleep or something because you made two games? Is that, uh... No, the second one was just one hour, so that was not very hard. But other people use that hour to make their other games better. Why don't why didn't you? Because <laughs> the first one was already perfect. <laughs> so fantastic sniffles looks ready. And red and yellow and green. So, fantastic sniffles. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, can you just start with the presentation? Why uh, they actually we want to make a different game. Uh, something about the Okay, so um, the story behind Fantastic Sniffles is that at the start we wanted to make a game about an orchestra and a conductor who slaps his musicians uh, to say uh, yes, um, they have to play better, so he transmits a message, right? But now uh, we decided because our sound designer uh, just got got, uh, got to another team. Uh, yeah, uh, we, we we just decided we just decided to make a game about cute animals. Uh, yeah, so that's it, right? Um, so, uh, at, the, at the top you can see um, we have like a, a hut, like we have a hut here, you can, um, you, you, oh no, when I pause it's paused, okay. Um, so, you, you can uh, drag and drop like tiles um, uh, to the map, and the goal of the game 
is to, um, to, to keep the elements uh, apart from each other, all right? Uh, so, so you have to like um, place tiles uh, to, to separate them, right? And uh, the rules behind this is that um, the cat can go over the thorns, the bird can fly over the wall, and the turtle can obviously go, go through the water, and they, um, they chase each other, and yeah, um, ter terrible things happen if, if they go And, and please don't ask us if, uh, what, what that has to do with, uh, with French medicine. We, we don't know. Uh, uh, up to the viewer. Yeah, yeah it's, it's up to interpretation, right? Yeah, so, so uh, you can, can show another death if, if you want. You can play later. Yeah, you, you, you figure, out, figure the, the layout out yourself when you play our game. Thank you. And after that, it's going to be drunk orchestra versus. <laughs> so, drunk orchestra, please come in, uh, come in, get ready. You stay here for a moment. So, what does that have to do with transmission? <laughs> well, so uh, they are like animals, and they are like going towards each other. And um, and when they meet, they transmit the message of violence okay. and food. <laughs> okay, follow-up question. Why do you hate animals? <laughs> uh, I don't know, because our artist was on a blood rush and he just said that he wanted to, to make uh, cruel animations. Ouch. Well, thank you for uh, killing two animals. <laughs> Yeah, we, we built a game called The Blame Game, or rather we tried to build it. We had sadly a few networking issues, which, we could, which is why we could finish it, and I don't have a prototype to show you now. But I'll just explain a bit about the process. Basically, the design of the game is that you are in a company, and then you have four departments, sales, human resources, IT, and uh, what was the fourth one? Management, exactly. And then at a constant war with one another, and they constantly try to shift work back and forth. So basically, what you have is a situation where you have a blade meter and a workload meter and you have to keep your workload meter balanced in order to not uh, sort of make your uh, blade meter rise above a certain critical point. Um, and ultimately the, the aim of the game is to get a person to go over 100% workload or below 0% workload, which means they get to the blame. And once they have the blame, uh, they have to shift it, shift it as quick as possible because if they're blamed by the end of the game, they lose. And <laughs> And uh, the idea was to sort of have first flash of like bureaucracy and networking stuff and all that sort of thing. Um, it's the, the prototype is like in mid stage right now, so it would make any sense showing you showing it to you. But basically, I think what we learned from the game jam is to be a bit more aware of, of like the uh, skill sets and just figure out what we can do and what doesn't make any sense to work on for one and a half days to this over. But yeah, um, I mean, I think we all had a good time. We all enjoyed ourselves, and ultimately, we blame management. <laughs> For a drunk orchestra versus, and after that it's gonna be uh, body mutilation. So body mutilation, please get ready. Obviously, you. <laughs> so what uh, what are you proud of in this game? Uh, what am I proud? I mean, I think the design is fairly solid, and I think despite the fact that we didn't finish it, we actually did a really good job. Like I'm pretty happy with every every person on our team. I think we all worked really hard. Yeah, we're not doing it for the show. Yeah, I mean, it was fun. I enjoyed the whole team work. It looks really good. Thanks. Please to play. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Are you ready? You look ready. <laughs> I don't see you. That should be... Okay, there you go. Um, okay, so... Guys, here. So I want to make a, a, a co-op game. 
Uh, I made a versus game. That, that's what came out. And uh, it's 3 a.m. Yeah, they're picking instruments. So it's 3 a.m. at night. You're an orchestra band, and two people from an orchestra band, and you're very, very drunk. So you decide, okay, let's see who can do the major scale, da, 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 the standard scale. So they're going to have, uh, they're going to pick their instruments, a bagpipe and a cello. They're in Scotland also, in Scotland, apparently. Um, and the, they're, um, they're going to start with just three notes, and they're going to get up all the way to eight notes, which is a full scale. But they're, it's all mixed up, so they're going to have to find it at the same time. That doesn't make any sense, you'll see in a second. So yeah, enter practice room and I'm gonna shut up. Come on, the cork is dry. <laughs> Ready? Fight! <laughs> Yeah. Which part do I get to cut off? Yeah. Right, so, 
I mean, there's, the choices are meaningful. <laughs> <laughs> so mysterious. So you're definitely gonna play this. Uh, so Luca is gonna, gonna be singing on you after that. Uh, yeah, Luca actually had the time to make delicious food for us because he was our master chef. <laughs> Stuff and I was thinking, what is missing in, in, in my life? Like when I get out of my house, when I go on the internet, when I watch a movie, I play a game, I don't see enough self-centered guys talking about themselves. So I think I, I can help. So here's my game. So here is me in 2015, new in Berlin. I can go check my home. Uh, there's my roommate, like, in the same room. Uh, sorry, can you use the, the touch instead of the mouse? Uh, when you click, I can study. Um, everybody's an asshole to me. Everything is bad. Uh, everything bad is someone else's fault. Uh, listen to me. Uh, here's my attention sink. Uh, here's my bed. Uh, this is where I usually reflect on uh, how much of a failure I am. Uh, actually, used to. Uh, now, uh, when I go to bed, I make sure some music, a podcast, or a video are playing. No felt, no fault, no set. <laughs> so, I could go to events, but uh, I didn't implement them, so... <laughs> but I can look for friends. Oh. <laughs> this is too hard. That's hard, yeah. <laughs> oh, but it's worth it. I <laughs> bet <laughs> Small talk. See you next time. <laughs> I can also see, search for love and sex, see what happens. <laughs> or maybe it's just go to next year. So, at home, let's see what happens. Oh, something different. New apartment. This one is cheap, and nice. I have my own room. I just have to fix some holes in the walls, paint the call, get a payment, all the furniture. But it's my place now. I mean, as long as I pay rent. We can also look for friends again. Uh, the guy that is far away is the same guy. <laughs> Or, or, or girl, who knows? They're all the same here. Uh, nice to see you. Let's hang out again some other time. And uh, oh, we can go to events. These are implemented. <laughs> Welcome to event name. Who's new? Some time passed. 
Um, the talks are over and the people are chatting. I exchange small talk as my mind drifts and finds mistakes I did in the past, mistakes I'm doing now. The unbearable weight of existence slowly comes to the foreground. Before it gets real, I could just stack some chairs, uh, put them here, helping others distract my brain from desolation. So, just picking up chairs. <laughs> <laughs> then I, I can stack them up. I put the few chairs away. It does add enough purpose to distract my brain, but as I look around and I only see better people than me, better go back to stacking chairs. <laughs> The organizer notices I'm putting chairs away. He thanks me and he smiles. Today I was vaguely useful to someone. As a prize, I get to stop hating myself until tomorrow morning. <laughs> we can try to look for love again. Ooh, there's people. Uh, that's interesting. We should hang out again. Here's my number. Yes, we can do on Monday. Sorry, I can't make it today. Let's try another time. Sorry, I can make it today. Sorry, I can make it today. Sorry, I can make it today. <laughs> oh, that's something about like bringing to a fairy club. Uh, yes, we can do Wednesday. Sorry, I can make it. Uh, let's try another time. Sorry, I can make it. Sorry, I can make it. <laughs> Interesting conversation. Interesting conversation. I think I'm falling for you. Lays a hand on my shoulder and slowly caresses towards the elbow. See you next time! <laughs> Sorry, I'm a bit busy right now. <laughs> uh, work, there's only 2017. I mean, like, it's just because I've been in the before. <laughs> 2017! Home! Oh, there's a new bed. A friend of mine wanted to change their life around and came to Berlin. They had no money, so I just posted them for a few months. Now they got a job, and they are renting the other room. We can look for friends again? Wow. Thanks. And you know, I'm here whenever you need me too. Ooh. Interesting conversation, personal conversation. Eight hours later, still personal conversation. And seriously, mess up a foot. She takes care of me, though. <laughs> Interesting conversation, personal conversation, sex. Personal conversation, interesting conversation, personal conversation, sex. <laughs> Yeah, nine. 
Uh, so we didn't get the first one. But is there anybody here who was there 10 years ago at any city? I just to try to. Oh. <laughs> I was kind of hoping. And how many people came here to Berlin just for a jam? So it wasn't worth it? Yes? Uh, if it was worth it for them. The other guy has to drop your light sources and has to try to get you through the maze uh, safely. And that's what we're going to try it now. Thank you. 
Okay, um, let me talk again. Yeah? So you have to see a few things you can drop to help the player literally uh, trying to get through the maze. Uh, like I said before, there are light sources, um, there are hints for directions. And the light sources you can uh, drop are in various colors available, so red could be in or maybe an area which you shouldn't go, green could be an area um, which you should definitely visit, or where the exit could be. So the thing here is you don't know what you get up front. Pieces are usually picked up randomly, so you don't know what, what basically items you get. And we think it's quite an interesting idea, but as you see, it's a win. <laughs> so let's try it out afterwards. Um, unless those guys get it working. Right, that's the screen. Um, the first player sees while the second is marked up to be going through the maze. Maybe it works, but it doesn't. Yeah, let's try it afterwards. Uh, if you're still interested, uh, just visit us and try it out yourself. Thank you. Yeah, so the next team is the Guardian, so they please get over here and build, and then after that it's gonna be Befriend. Like Befriend. So Befriend gets over here, where are they? Oh, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, I still have questions. So, what, what would you do different uh, the next time? Because so, uh, there were some starting um, difficulties, like for the next time, what would you do differently? Uh, that's true. So, I was like, I was like, we never did a dark game on four, so. Uh, of course, we decided not really that we would go for the arcade this year, so we put a lot of work into this, and uh, we write about it, we tried things out, and um, we're pretty proud of what we did, but, sorry, it didn't work, so uh, let's try it out afterwards. Um, the thing we uh, had a lot of fun with was um, trying out to get people to talk to each other without actually talking to each other. So communicating was this year's topic. So how would you get a, a guy or a girl to go to a specific direction with things you don't know, uh, you, can, you could drop them. Because you don't know the color, you don't know if it's there, or it's not certain what you will get up front. So uh, that's the thing here, and we found it very interesting. So try it out yourself, thank you. So afterwards we're going to have a short period where we have to set up the showcasing space where I would ask everybody that not, that's not directly involved with uh, preparing the showcasing spaces to like, kind of go outside and grab a beer or grab some pizza because it's going to be there then, we hope. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's going to happen afterwards. I'm going to tell you again just to fill the empty space. Uh, okay, so basically what we were trying to accomplish uh, emphasis on trying, um, was to have a very narrative-driven game, which I haven't seen so many in game jams, because I now seem to have understood why. Um, <laughs> but actually, I mean, we, we actually were kind of confident that we might actually pull it off, because we have the story uh, properly done, in about five minutes of very branching uh, things. And basically the idea is, um, which is, I mean, you see that, but it's, lovely uh, layout, that there is basically three things, and other three things, and two things up there. And <laughs> so there's things there, and basically what they try to really represent is um, a cable between the green and the blue one, 
um, and you basically have to decide which of the ports you have want to connect to set pe um, people. I mean, those things are basically blogs of people's thoughts and what they're saying, and you want to kind of connect them with one another to give them the chance to escape. I don't know. It's it's a mystery. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna just connect those two if I can. Okay, nice. So basically, it just runs through. We have some text. We have the basic outlines of every outcome. I think there's 27 in total, but not all of them different. Most of them are kind of different from one another. And yeah, we were kind of, yeah, <laughs> overestimating our capabilities a little, maybe. And yeah, it didn't help that we didn't do that much yesterday. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically it. Um, if you want, you're interested in the story and how the choices and all that kind of works, um, maybe come see us later. We can, we've got everything planned out. So if someone just wants to try it and just tell us what he does, we can definitely do it in a more analog way, I guess. So do you want to add something? Um. It's an amazing story. <laughs> Thank you. So the next game is going to be Befriend, and after that it's going to be Holo Shoot. So Holo Shoot gets over there, uh, Befriend gets over here. <laughs> Can you stay with me for a moment? So, so can you give us like a rough idea on what the story is about? Well, it's basically about you being able to tell, talk to those people. And they're kind of trapped, they seem to have lost one another and are not with each other anymore. So it's the classical, you have to split up, it's dangerous um, kind of scenario. And yeah, basically find each other and get out. That's the basic idea. Is there actually danger? Maybe. I see. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. So we were the ones who wanted to do the spider game. Maybe the one who were the brainstorming remember. The idea was there's a spider in the dark, and there's a bee somewhere in its net. Um, no, a fly, and it has to find the fly. Then our lovely art department said, A spider in the, in the dark, go fuck yourself. <laughs> so we didn't do that. Instead, we thought, okay, what's, what's more to, something, a project where there's more to do for the art department. So we decided, there's going to be a bee. And, can we see the bee? Yes. Don't go too quick. So this is the bee. Welcome to the beehive. So of course the bee has to find a flower with some honey in it. But how does it do it? It's a really stupid bee. So this is notorious B.I.G. He does his little dance and shows shows you the way. So you have to remember the way. It's yeah, it's just, it's the way. Nine directions. I think, I hope you all remember them, I will ask you now. <laughs> so, now you remember the way, uh, and uh, right. here's the maze. Uh, so where do we go? Left. Right. Left. Left. Right. Left. Left. Way, you have counted a cow.
next up is Holo Shoot by the Holo team. We're going to ask you some questions, please stay here. And after that, it's going to be uh, Fireflies by Signalarity. So, so, how long did you brainstorm for all the beat puns? Uh, we mostly brainstorm for beat puns. That's basically half of the game jam. So, you spend four hours of beat puns jamming. Uh, yeah, this is a nice summary. Yeah. So, so give us some more Well, we have a uh, song, of course. We wanted to repeat the dance part of the song uh, after they, they get to the flowers. Because that was when you mix these to other beats. When you're in the beehive, you have to behave. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So it was really kind of laggy, so we didn't want you to show that kind of stuff. Otherwise, you would get nausea sickness from just watching. Um, that's why we decided you just to show the single player version, but um, yeah, let's check it out. Um, now you don't see anything yet. Uh, I have to start the live stream, and you guys have to know it's, um, there's a little bit delay. It should be ideally like just a few seconds. So I just do this here. Let's check it out. And yeah, so just so you guys know, uh, we'll make it full screen now, and then uh, you can come over, talk a little bit about the game while he's starting it. All right, so um, see, I just put like the minimum resolution so it doesn't lag or crash. It looks kind of really bad. Let's just one second. I will reset the screen and make it a little bit better. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. So now you can see some good screens. And he's starting the game now. And basically it's um, kind of simple. It's just it's a shooter. So you make the air tag. And you want to shoot um, enemies. Which are following you. And you have to run away from them so they don't kill you. And I think... Have you started that yet? Okay, yeah. Uh, 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 what do you see right now? Okay, wait a second. I think the delay is a little bit more now because it's in the game already, but we are still waiting. So I will just restart one more time. <laughs> Otherwise, you have to um, think that he is doing it right now in lifetime. With no delay at all. Okay, so let me just check real quick. Um, there should be sound. Wait a second. Add audio. Um, Can you hear the sound? Yep. Yeah. Some reason we don't have sound. Ah, there we go. Yeah, the sound was made by those two. They made really awesome music. So I'm glad you can hear it. And we did the programming, we had lots of struggles up at 5 a.m. in the morning trying to get some multiplayer stuff to get done, but um, this is it. So here you see the start button and there's a timer and you can start now and try to shoot some enemies. Cool.
Firefly. Um, or Fireflies. Um, so please come uh, up here and prepare your notebook, and after that it's going to be Dang by Snow Bro. Maybe it is. Yeah. Alright, um, I got good news and bad news. The bad news is uh, we didn't manage to finish any of the levels of the gameplay that we were planning to do. But the good news is we managed to salvage everything into a really thrilling narrative experience that is almost exactly five minutes long. So uh, maybe we can turn down the lights a little. Can we? Oh? Can we turn up the volume to the level? Yeah. Alright, so let's not waste any more time. Enjoy. Thank you. 
Do you really think this might feel the same? Oh, so now you want to talk to me again? I'm sorry, okay? I opened my heart to you and you broke it. I said I'm sorry. But you don't love me. You're a really good friend. I would be a lot more silly. What's it sound? Animals don't come here. Hmm. I know this is scary for you, but I want you to know that whatever happens, I will always love you. So I kind of had 10 hours to make the game. And uh, I was alone. So I am tired. <laughs> I apologize if uh, the graphics are not pleasing to your eye. Not that I care. I just have uh, no time to spend on graphics and I am not an artist. However, I had to show you something so I got this little PNG here. It's this one, see? To those who may not recognize it, it's the new, brand new, super cool Ugandan Nakos meme, and it's very edgy. What's that about, you may inquire? Some people spoke about depression, but did their games make you feel depression? Burnley, are you ready to get depressed? <laughs> the theme behind the game... <laughs> you nailed it. Uh, the theme behind the game is the depression in millennials. Basically, to those who are not aware about it, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everything that is network and social, it gives you instant gratifications. Psychologists will tell you, I'm not a psychologist, uh, but they will tell you that it, this basically is fucking up the dopamine system of your, uh, of all the millennials, all the youngsters and stuff. So we are depressed because we are used to get much more out of likes from Facebook than out of real life. So real life starts to lose meaning and then you go and end up like this. <laughs> I'm gonna actually play this because this, this is... There, audio. Respect. 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 These are actual volunteers, boys. I will spare you the naming you. So why am I not showing you the game? 
first of all, there is no game, it's a prototype. <laughs> Second, it is a linear story, so if I showed you anything that is not a semi Easter egg, I would spoil you, and I want, of course, all of you to get depressed and play my game. Yes, uh, I have learned a lot in this gen. It is uh, quite a success, because uh, I could spend a lot of time working alone. I never made a gem alone, so this was my first time, and I managed to finish, so big clap to me, and I'm done. Thank you. So the next one is the Middleborn Rock, and after that it is going to be a spider web. So, in the meantime, I have, I have a question for you. Um, so, what, what, what animal are you? I am a red panda, a species that only gets together when it's mating time and usually dies alone. That is a scientific fact. Another scientific fact is that I didn't realize that my plane leaves tomorrow, so I have nowhere to sleep with. So if anybody wants to offer me a couch, I'm up for it. But I stink. I get a hostel anyway. So who has a couch for a red panda? I got one. So you go to Luca. He's very happy, are you? Okay, Luca, I share you the, the blood of our nation, which is Italy. And uh, I thank you. You are the man. <laughs> so, at the beginning of the game jam, I took inspiration from one of the games that another team presented, and I approached it and I was really excited to make a game about spiders in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently there are artists who don't want to. We don't have any artists, so that was a lot of surprise. Uh, we made this together, three designers, myself, Michael Albert, and Nadia. Uh, we also had support with music from Ellie Abraham and Andrew Ackman helped us out with our sound effects and different uh, audio. And we'll just get right into it. What does it mean to be a spider? You make some webs. And what do you do when you have a web? You make a bigger web. And it's all about getting as much space and bigger, the biggest web that you can. And that's what your game is about. It's all about eating flies. The bigger your web, the more flies you're going to catch. But maintaining a big web is a lot of work. You've got to eat a lot of spiders. The more spiders you eat, the longer you can keep working on your web. But if you don't get the flies in time, they fly away. Flies. And... <laughs> When they fly away, they break part of your web because they're annoying little flies. And so what you gotta do, you gotta eat them when they fly away so you can maintain your big web. And that's the game. Better, faster, Michael. Yes, <laughs> sir. Faster, better, stronger, spider. <laughs> and then by the end, if you're not able to maintain the big web, you die. Oh. Don't shoot the messenger. So don't shoot the messenger, please get ready. So, are you aware that you write spider with an I usually? <laughs> that started with a typo, and that's not just turned into a name. Because we couldn't think of a good name. That's oh, I see. So, I, are you afraid of spiders, or is anybody in your team? Uh, luckily we didn't see any, so we'll never know. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> Looks like we're doing a bit of more complicated construction right now. So I see some very high tech things coming. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. 
It's it's a laptop game. Yeah. It's a portable thing. Oh my god, it's video. That's Matt, yay! From the future. Okay, you ready? Yes. Not really, but here I am. 
Hey everybody, my name is Vinko. This is the beautiful team of six people I get to work with at this game jam. Um, here's our game. Don't shoot the messenger, which is the pigeon you play. The pigeon has an unpleasant job of working in a small redneck village where everybody hates everybody. And for some reason, the hate is put on the guy who's just delivering messages. Because that's the way they communicate. Please, let's play the game. Here are the houses in the village. Here's the pigeon. You got some stuff to deliver. The houses have numbers, which they tell you when you pick up something up what you mixed up. The guys are always angry. So it's kind of it was hard to communicate the fact that you do your job well, but everybody's getting angry and starts actually shooting you. Everybody has a cannon in the house, so you will soon uh, see some of that appear in this. This pop culture reference here is shooting pizza slices, for example. So now you're delivering a middle finger here, and they're shooting eyeballs as you It's kind of um, random stuff. The developer, do you have anything to say about it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, how, you like, how do you like it? It was a good, good standard go at a game jam game, so pretty basic stuff. But then, I think we got the basics down, it was really fun to put more and more stuff and <laughs> animations and all of that in there. Another go, maybe? Yes. One more go. Don't shoot the messenger. Another day at the hateful village where the pigeon works. Take up some boots. You know it. You don't need me. So it's time based. You have 50 seconds every time you do a successful deliver, you get some more time. 52 seconds at the moment. We wanted to have, uh, or the original idea was to have more floppy bird style mechanics where you tap the right and left. But actually, you know, you're holding down the buttons up left and right and dropping stuff with the space button. Poor bird. The messages get more ugly too. So you actually try to get bitcoins, 0 0.39, it's pretty good at the moment. Thank you. So the next game is going to be Groove Train. So Groove Train, please come up here and after that it's going to be a last mistake, 5 to laser ring. So and my question to you would be, what does the pigeon do with all the bitcoins? I think he goes to buy mate, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's a lot of mate. <laughs> and a decent bed, maybe. Sorry. Decent bed, also. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, time for an audience participation. Because Tobias wants to tell you something. We're going to do a mini jam thing. Yeah, so, because one of the upcoming events actually next week, I think. I don't know. So, so um, 
If you like the global game jam, but you don't like the global part, you want it to be local and 48 hours is too long, so 8 hours would be cooler, and once a year is not often enough, so once a month would be cooler, I will tell you that you have very specific wishes. <laughs> if you would ask for that, I will tell you you have very specific wishes, but I can totally deliver all of that. There's the Berlin Mini Jam here in Berlin. Um, we've been doing this for seven years now, every month. Or maybe eight years, or six years, I don't really remember. <laughs> A lot of years. And um, it's the next one is on 24th of February. Everyone mark it in your calendar right now. But don't, it would be cool if not everybody would be coming, because we don't have, we don't have enough space for all of you. But if, all of your markets, some might, I don't know. Okay, cool. Either way, it's a free event. We're doing it every month. You can join our Facebook group, Berlin Game Jam Meetup or something. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a meetup group. It's also Berlin, just search for Berlin Game Developers on Meetup. And um, join our events. They are free, they are fun, they are on Saturdays. <laughs> you're not working, and it's about eight hours, maybe ten if you count presentations. And there's multiple, but you have to pay for it. <laughs> uh, that's all. Now it's time for the groove train. Groove train, get on board. Choo choo. So animals from all over the world have come to see the parade of the Groove Bunnies in Berlin. And I'm gonna play this because I coded the game and I'm kind of the one who played it the most. Annika has made the art and Claudine has made the fantastic music. Longer than the small ones, and you have to make a chain to kind of make the beat go and the train go, and obviously the people dance. So, you have to groove meter here to see how you're doing, but now he's building the chain and so it's going to the groove. Can we turn the sound a bit up? You have to play them at the right speed. Uh, you have to play as many as possible to get your groove meter up. Let's see if we can make this crew, that is, this crowd is super bored and nodding, let's make them explode. Yeah, Moritz is the only one who's good at this game and actually knows how to get the groove meter up, so, so he's playing it, he knows what he's doing. And it's too slow. Yeah, it's an LP, it's bigger, and therefore you have to change the wheel thingy. Of course, right? I mean... That's <laughs> groovy, that's good. Whoa! They're liking it, I think. Or not.
came as NOS Mistake 5 the laser ring, and after come up with these during the presentation, it's not very easy. So, what's the job description of the bunny? Because he's not really a train conductor, but like for a DJ, he does a lot of things in addition to that. So, what would you say? A DJ and a runner, because he runs around and carries the, the cocks around. Yeah, I think it's, there should be a team of bunnies up there actually, because it would be much more efficient to like, carry all the stuff around. Maybe his name is uh, James the Jukebox Bunny. James the Jukebox Bunny? So, so why James? Um, because I usually say Jason, and I didn't want to say Jason this time. Okay, thank you very much. That's Niels, and that's Jan, and we made a game, right? Um, so, we're on Mars, right? And we have robots, right? But they are on Mars and we are here. So, we need to transmit our input, but it's still late. It's a um, cold game, it's a fighting game, and they shoot lasers, which is a bad idea. I guess, because you can fire at your friend, which is not a good thing. Let's just start, I guess. Did I forget something? Um, yeah, so we input where we want to go with our robots, and after every player is ready, uh, they start doing it all at the same time, which is kind of the um, twist. And you have to try to kill the other robots, not yours and not your friends. It's working fine.
one thing that I recognize is that nobody, which I find kind of surprising, is thanking the team to make this all happen. So uh, the first part of our time goes to everybody who made this happen. It's my first game jam and I'm pretty astonished on seeing the people uh, like cooking and preparing and, and all this kind of stuff that goes maybe up to the time. So, since it's the first game jam for me, um, I was kind of scared by it. So I chose to pick people that I knew, but people that I don't work together with anymore, which is a sad thing, so everybody weak. So I found Basi and Friedrich, and we decided on keeping pretty much the same structure that we had when back in the good old times we worked together. So Friedrich is coding the stuff, Basti is designing all the low poly art and implementing everything in Unity, and I'm the asshole that cannot animate, if you remember the first introduction round where I thought, uh, kind of mentioning that I wanted to grab my, like my lost passion of animating. So it took me a day to, to get that ready, <laughs> to get like all the license service and all the shit set up. So we had a very, very good time and I want to thank everybody whom I got to know and who I got to meet here. It's been fucking awesome. So you are telling me it's over. Right? It's over. So the game we, we did was kind of a cheat because we decided that we wanted to do a hack and slay, no matter what. <laughs> we knew each other, so we are uh, we're there. And then we figured out that transmission kind of worked pretty much well with a roguelike hack and slay, where when you lose your gear, the gear is dropped and the other guys pick it up. So you get spikes in a game design curve that make you a little harder. And you can either decide to avoid them or to go through them. Of course you didn't manage it overall, but we have the system for it. So, as I mentioned, Basi is doing uh, like pretty much uh, all, all the designs. I was forced to rip the shit. Uh, which was like horrible, and then I was really to animate it, and and Freddy was doing all this kind of stuff, and we had awesome support of Raphael. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Uh, who whom I just just like this this afternoon outside, and he we talked about his stuff, and he was like, oh yeah, I have a couple of minutes left, and he was doing the sounds, and then so thank you because you made the game more a game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we only have more to read, but we don't have more to show, so... <laughs> Enjoy the game. <laughs> I'll get over the video, but yeah, everything is the same. Yeah, so actually the idea there was that you basically get transmitted inside this game, and then you play. And yeah, there we are. And we can pick up loot over here. And this little guy over here told me what we will do. So... Then I die and he gets my, my gear. <laughs> so, and I'm just getting a sport and have to deal with him now with my helmet. And yeah, there's a bigger level, so I can kill those guys. And hopefully, I can kill some guys that actually give me some new. Uh, let's go over here. <laughs> If you get uh, new things and you have already something equipped, we don't have any inventory because you basically have to choose very quickly what you want to have. Okay, that one is not that interesting. So I just stick with what I have over there. And that's basically it. More and more levels. So, yeah, that's it. You can play, play, whatever, running around, killing enemies. Thank you very much. So the next team is going to be Signals, and after that it is going to be Tar. And Carsten went away, so I can't ask him. Oh, yeah, 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 I won't ask him something, I'm friendly. <laughs> so, it was your first game jam, you said? Yes. So what's the one thing that impressed you the most? Carsten. <laughs> what did you hear before? <laughs> 
Okay, what's the what's the most impressive new thing that you didn't know before? <laughs> I mentioned that earlier. Uh, the, the most impressive thing was that there were so many people working on this environment, and they make it happen. And nobody who's here has to worry about anything. It's like you can worry about like where you sleep and all that kind of stuff. But it's like seeing people cooking for 40 hours straight. And then smiling is just astonishing to me. And I would never, never, ever again start a company. <laughs> it, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> yes, thanks to Luca for cooking for 40 hours apparently. Yeah. <laughs>
Um, oh my god, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm really bad at my own game. Yes. Okay, let's try this again. Um, and also, every, after every time I uh, miss a thing, um, the, the pad lights up in a different pattern. And yeah, there's also more sound. Okay, I can show the pad. Um, like the longer you go, and the idea was that it's not supposed to be like randomly generating and it'd be like forever until you run out of strength. But it's, I, it was only me, and I wasn't here on like Friday and Saturday evening. But that was it. Thank you very much. So, Luca sets up now the last game of the evening. <laughs> the last presented game. And so, um, so, how much research do you do about light physics? The same as the Ruthless team, so just like reading two minutes through the Wikipedia page? I watched two YouTube videos. <laughs> I, mean, I think that's more, so you're a physicist now. Congratulations. <laughs> One hour diversifier, and uh, Tobias was like, I'm going to do a game in one hour. Yes. Wait a minute, I can make a game in 59 minutes. <laughs> and uh, um, so you have to come up with compromise. Right? My game is 3D, it's set in space, and you are like a spaceship. You have to deflect enemies uh, uh, with just these bombs coming towards your direction. And you said signal to make them explode. And I got everything in one hour, like all the code, all the models, all the animations, uh, special effects. The only problem is like I couldn't get sound and game design. <laughs> so I had to improvise. So my game is this one. Maybe you can recognize something from somewhere. <laughs> So, yeah, I have to, to do like that. Yeah. I did, yeah. I have to copy the comp uh, game design from somebody else. That's what my. Oh, yeah, one hour, come on. <laughs> in his development of yeah, the second yeah. game, right? It so was better. This, this game looked much better. I'm very envious of artists. <laughs> but he had 10 minutes more, so... Uh, game design wise. Uh, <laughs> we should collaborate for two hours. Yes. <laughs> okay, so now a few last things. Slide. Slide. Yeah, so what happens now? So we wait for five minutes after this is done. So uh, it would be good if, well, no, we actually do something in those five minutes. So we do something for five minutes. Um, then afterwards, you will be able to check out the game. So the jammers, they know where they should go if they haven't forgotten because of speed deprivation um, to set up the uh, showcasing spaces. There's going to be one showcase space in here where, where there's, uh, I think, around eight games. And there's going to be one showcase space outside. If you go left uh, from the auditorium and then straight, there's going to be another showcase space there. So I think all of the games that were shown, and even some more, are, are being uh, playable there. So that's awesome. Then there's also going to be some pizza and beer outside. Uh, so you can stand around, play the games, talk to the jammers, talk to each other, have fun. Um, so that's that. Then, oh no, wait a moment. Um, immediately after, the next slide is done, because I'm going to talk about a few upcoming events, um, I need you to put the chairs away. So the jammers go away to their spots, uh, and everybody else just grabs a chair, stacks it, puts it to the side. According to Lucas' game, it's a very fulfilling work. <laughs> <laughs> and you might even get a smile from me. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so that being said, there's a few upcoming events that I want to talk to you about. Um, so one of them you already heard. The next one is actually the Game Creators Hangout. Do a thing. Yes. So next week on Thursday there's a Game Creators Hangout. So that's basically a monthly event where we, or basically all people that make games in Berlin, or most people that make games in Berlin, all of you. Um, come together, uh, have some drinks, um, talk to each other, have fun with each other. That sounded wrong. We usually prefer at the meltdown, they have unfortunately closed, so it's going to be at a different location that will be announced very soon. It's secret for now. And after that, actually, the next day, there's the Intel Bus workshop and another talk and play. I think Lorenzo is somewhere here as well. So, yeah, he's outside. He's awesome. He, he does the talk and play. So there's a lot of talks there. There's a lot of games there. So definitely check that out. Then we have the mini game jam that uh, Toby was talking about. That is on the 24th of February. So if you want to do some more jamming, then you should definitely go there. That's in the co-op, right? In the co-op. So here in Kreuzberg as well, actually not too far from here. And then there's also another event, so we do have definitely a little advertisement plug for Oh, I didn't, I didn't see that. Uh, one, uh, oh, and on the 24th there's also Pam Square uh, happening. So um, You can get all of the events at BerlinGameScene.com, Lorenzo's website. Um, yeah, and The Wall 2061, uh, it's a, a cyberpunk city game, live action role playing game that will happen during the games week. So it will happen in April, at the end of April, but we're currently running a Kickstarter, so that is the Gamestorm Berlin, and a lot of other people, so most of the organizers team for the Global Game Jam is actually part of that project as well. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about, um, just check it out, if you kind of like cyberpunk and you like doing crazy things in the city. Look to, uh, watch the video and think of supporting us. And, yeah. <laughs> Talking of the Games Week. Um, Games Week is in April, there's lots of awesome other events there as well, like the Kobadis and the Amaze. And talking about the Amaze, what a transition that was. Matt wants to talk to you. <laughs> No, just as the beginning, uh, as a reminder, so the cool games you did, uh, think about uh, getting in, into the contest of the maze, it's still running, deadline is February 4th, and uh, then maybe you get selected and are in the exhibition as well and get amazing awards. That's it. That, that being said, thanks everybody for participating, thanks everybody for coming by tonight to check out the presentations, to check out the games. We'll be around as well if you have any questions about us, about the event or anything. Uh, we'll probably look very busy, but we'll probably not be very busy. <laughs> so, thanks a lot for that. Um, don't forget to share, so we're going to do that now. And thank you for hosting us.